Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? What time is it? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. Now my to win the league, yes! Yeah! And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Game time, boo! Well, hello and welcome to the Below the Rim show, a show dedicated to the BBL. It's me, Pabs. I'm joined, as always, by my main man, Ads. How are you, sir? Main man like. We're also joined by our northern correspondent, the brave-hearted Mr. Grant Young. How are you? Northern Lake. New podcast out uh, as well. Yes, how are we? Absolutely, did record with Jordan Burns uh, one day of the week. Are we on last night? It's brilliant. So that sure. was out on. Check out the Gladcast Basketball Podcast for that one. We certainly will. I look forward to listening to that one. No Nicholson tonight. He coaches tonight for uh, Patriots Development or Youth Program type thing. So uh, unless he jumps on later on, who knows? We're without him this evening. Um, plenty to discuss. We'll we'll do a kind of cup roundup, but we'll kind of do it as as we talk about different aspects of things and then anything we miss will sweep up towards the end. We'll do a BTR five as well. So fellas have a start thinking now about uh, who you're putting forward for this. Cause it was quite a good weekend of basketball to some degree. There was a couple of decent cracking games going on. Certainly some results we maybe didn't predict with the exception of Grant, who may have swept the board. We'll check that when we get Man. to predictions. Uh, Let's uh, let's kick things off with Caledonia. In fact, Caledonia two wins over the weekend. Um, fairly, uh, not even fairly, a convincing win against the Riders, who uh, the majority of us predicted in terms of of winning that game. And the Riders' form of late would suggest that they may. It may be the other way around. They may have made short work uh, of the gladiators, but it wasn't to be. Um, which leads me to kind of a question. Obviously, you know, within that, you can talk about aspects of the game if you like, or it, or the games, because obviously they 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 uh, dominated the sharks as well and and kind of lifted their foot off the gas in the fourth quarter of that cup. Yeah, uh, I'm breaking on in the fourth, second round, I should say. Yeah. Um, but my question to to both of you and you can take it further from that if you want to it was the 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 kind of early run for the uh for the gladiators perhaps wasn't what we expected they they dropped a few games we didn't expect they dropped a couple to bristol early on and obviously bristol have been flying high so maybe that was to be expected who knows it was it was their sort of early run in so they 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 were three and five in the league they're still third from bottom now they're four and five obviously after picking up that one league win was that down to the scheduling because they that it did feel like the scheduling for them was pretty tough grant my man so i always yeah so there's always easy to say that scheduling's tough scheduling's tough but there was a lot of winnable games there Hmm. Um, the Bristol they obviously won one in Bristol and then lost the next week they won quite comfortably in Bristol first weekend and then got absolutely trounced the second one but the two kind of games for me that stand out like losing to Plymouth away when you travelled all that way that's you can kind of understand that especially after playing the night before against Bristol but the two games that stand out for me is the the two defeats away to Cheshire hmm. Um the second one, if I may get the games run the wrong way, but the second one was a, a landslide defeat. Um, but the first one, they started off way down and worked their way back up and actually looked like they were about to take the game and and then let Cheshire have another second or third win to pull away. So I think early season being away so often, like we've only played three home games. Mm. When you think of how many home games Bristol have had, um, it's a considerable difference and I think maybe now with a few more home games up till the end of the year hopefully you'll see an improvement in the kind of winning the win column um, the game Wednesday to get Wednesday night against Leicester was brilliant like for a Wednesday night like the players must have been 
been told, oh, might be quiet, might be whatever. And it was the complete opposite. Like it was a near mm. full house. It was brilliant. Just for midweek basketball as well, it was absolutely superb. Mm. Uh, Adds my man. I mean, they're definitely the, uh, the team that found the form. It's like Grant said, scheduling. Yeah, whatever. It's one of them, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's, it's not, I mean, it's a long old journey. You win games, don't you? Yeah, mm. it's long, long gold journeys that you, uh, you gladiators boys have got to do. Um, much like Plymouth, you know what I mean? There's no sort of game on your doorstep, is there? Um, I guess Newcastle, yeah, Newcastle's the nearest for you, isn't it? But what's that? Still like a couple hours, three mm. hours? Three hours, probably, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's difficult, but, you know, they seem to find in the feet a little bit and, and, so I'm just using the wrong mouse here for the wrong computer because I, I have a point that I wanted to bring up. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, beat, they're beating good teams. I mean, Sheffield um, are streaky, as we know, but, you know, you don't want to play them on any given night. They've beaten them. Um, and it, it's beaten them twice, beaten to... Leicester twice. Mm. Yeah, um, a couple of shocks as well. You know, why not? And um, I just think it's it's coming together nicely. Rocky start, but how how much of a difference to that team does Ali Frazier make? Because obviously, part of that run of of defeats and the, and the, particularly coming up to the little break you guys had, there was no Ali Frazier, and he's back now. Yeah, and I suppose I think you and I—I I can't remember if we talked about it on this or just privately. We said that you wonder if. Caledonia had Ali Fraser for the uh, game away to Plymouth. How much would that have been against Hassan? Because Hassan dominated that game with a mm. more veteran presence, and Fraser then helped Happy to have a better game. Like if you look, I've got this. I've just got the stats up in front of me for the Leicester game. So Ali Fraser started. He played twenty three minutes. He only scored six points, but allowed Tappy to come off the bench, play sixteen minutes, and score thirteen points. So the two working combo quite well. And what they allow, but having someone like Ali Fraser, that experienced body, can only be a good thing. You've got to see every team in the league has that kind of experienced big guy. Mm. Um, he's so clever, got, isn't he? Newcastle got the full William Wee when he's fit. Um, Nelson Henry, all the t- good teams have a an experienced pro in the middle. Mm. And without him, Gladiators did kind of struggle. Mm. It does. It certainly looks that way. Yeah. And and. I think he's one of those guys that we, when he when he's fit, when he plays majority of the season, we look for him to be definitely kind of in that Brit BBL, all all, all Brit BBL team at the end, if not the BBL team of the season, because he's that kind of player. And like you said, I think this the season on, team sorry. we've kind of re- we've kind of always relied on him to be a scoring threat, but I don't think we need him to be that in this team. Right. I think we can use him to be that kind of. Body in the middle, he's a great passer of the basketball. He reads the game so well that he probably takes the attention off other players that allows a Sloan, a Burns, a a Onwaz, a Bailey, or whoever it may be to go and get their shots. Mm. Like, if Ali Fraser's only scoring six points, but your team's still winning by 20 plus points, it's a brilliant place to be. I was very impressed with with Bailey. He's shown signs of being, you know, that. X factor to that team, the the kind of hard working big guy who can throw his body around, take big shots, but he he looked very very good against the Riders. I suppose his 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 it's only kind of question mark control it in terms of the amount of fouls he gains. Hmm. Like he's against Sharks, he was sitting down with eight minutes to go in the first, for example. Hmm. Um, against Leicester, he was a bit better, but. That's his one question mark because when he like, look, we did against Raiders. He took firstly Mark Mark gloving out the game and was able to score twenty three points off eleven for twenty one shooting, six rebounds, five assists, three steals, one block. Like it's like the perfect stat line of a match yeah. for a game in only twenty six minutes. So he is a player that and he can handle the ball as we, as I've said about five assists. Like he he's a quality player. It's just hopefully he can stay on the court long enough to be that difference. Like he's him along with I really actually quite like what Gareth has done in the last few games is start Kyle Jimenez and it'll be interesting to see how long he starts Kyle or if that's only until Jordan Burns gets up to speed mm-hmm. 
and that's maybe kind of saying of where what we expect to see from his rotation is him and his start and okay he's not going to create his own shot or shoot I think he has slowly been coming back from an injury after the Conway games but whether it's him and his or Burns starting I, I, I like what we're going with I like it Add to my man. Let's move this on to obviously they the Gladiators made fairly short work of of Sheffield. They they lost the last quarter. Caledonia lost the last quarter twenty two seven and still won the game by uh, nine points. And and you know the best will in the world. They didn't really ever look under threat, as it were. The shark this Sharks team. We've we've alluded to them being not the greatest team to watch sometimes. I, I mean, other times, you know, um, when Said Nelson gets his hands on the ball, he looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, Rodney Glasgow Jr. is having, or has been having some some pretty good games with in terms of assists and, and building their play. And Bennett Cooks really turned it on of late. What do you make of that cup game? From watching it, I, I didn't think they've, wanted to win it if you know what I mean they, I mean do we put that down to them being a bit short obviously Caledonia on a high after after beating the Riders what's going on with the Sharks we've had this uh, we've had this argument before about the teams want to win in a cup game or if it's convenient to just let it go and we always kind of do the same thing I don't really think there's any players in the league or coaches that would just so good. Nah, we'll just let this one go. So I think that um, Caledonia just in con- we're just in control. And the thing with Sheffield is, look at their record, six and six. Mm. You know, and that for me just about sums them up. One minute they're really good, the next minute they're not. Don't know which mm. Sheffield you're going to get. When you go to play the Sharks, you could get one of two Sheffields. <laughs> and and that's kind of how they've been for a while. We've we, we've we've talked about it um, before, like Kipper Nichols, for example. One minute I'm like, I love this guy; he's awesome. And then the two games you won't see him. Yeah, he clearly don't. I, I, I think he was ill for this one. Yeah, can you hear he, me? Yeah, yeah, we got you. He was. You think he was ill for this one? Yeah. Yeah, so he was ill, and Side Nelson, I think, hurt. I think he said something about a calf injury. Okay. Um, so there, but to be missing both those guys, that's a huge loss for them. Is that's they're kind of let's be honest. So far this season, they're two main players. Not a lot um, of depth there, is there? Yeah. Absolutely not. And you look at around the league. That's that's even though Sheffield have taken some massive scalps, all it takes is one, two injuries, and they're really, really struggling. Mm. It's funny, isn't it? Because they're fourth in the in the league right now. Like you say, six and six. But below them, everybody's below fifty um, percent. Above, obviously, we've got seven and four, seven and two, eight and three. Um. So there's there's bit, there's a level of consistency there, and obviously the style they play. I mean, it suits them down to the ground, particularly away from home. They seem to be able. To- the thing is, they normally they're probably looking to score. So they scored six to eight points. It's okay. That includes mm. that fourth quarter where the shots began to drop. Mm. And then, plus Gladiators clearly stepped off the gas. But 68 points for them, they would hope to win games with that score. Mm. You almost think their magic number is like, if you can keep them, if you can score 70 plus points on them, you're probably going to win the game. Mm. And that's, that's where the difference is. And they just don't have the depth. Um, they've got players who haven't been as good this season and amazingly their kind of style of play maybe that kind of bit more slow and monotonous styles probably help them and they are shorter bodies mm. um, but they're 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 500 they're split their wins and losses but it's amazing when you look behind them down to probably Caledonia I've all called Caledonia one game behind them mm. 500 it's tight. it's tight isn't um, it and like it's really tight from fourth down to eight and all it takes is one or two wins, and they could be right down at, beside where Newcastle kind of are. Yeah, I think. I mean, we talked about this, and we won't dwell on it too much because there's not been any league games this weekend. But we've we've talked about this in terms of you know looking at the league table. Is this particularly 
that bottom two is this how we're going to be looking at the table at the end of the season? And I'm starting to think it, it might well be. Surrey just seems to have continuous bad luck with, with injuries and, you know, that squad's not what it could be because of, you know, no Andrew Lawrence, you're missing certain players on certain nights and it's it's tough. It's tough to turn that around. So I expect they'll pick up a few wins, but I don't know if the it, it's a bit too much. Even at this stage, it might be out of their reach to get there. Eagles, of course, just, I mean, they look like they're in just free fall, really. Um, plenty of time. And there's, I mean, there's a couple of nice, I mean, they, they obviously, they lost to the Riders in that cup uh, in the, what would that be? The quarterfinals, wasn't it? In the quarterfinals, 94-73. It was a, it was a weird game. Uh, it First quarter was good. I mean, the Eagles went up to start with, took a, took a little advantage, and then it looked like, they were going to be hanging in and around the the riders, and Defoe for one came out of the blocks, looked like he was you know not bodies flying like he always has done. But it didn't really go above that. It kind of it kind of stayed around there, and and as you expect, Leicester riders were consistent in every quarter except the fourth when the the Eagles you know picked up a you know, win in the fourth, 23-16, but, I mean, you're losing quarters, 29-13, 25-17, the game's already over, yeah. So, disappointing, and it's hard to see, because they had their big boys, you know, Hamlet, Johnson, Defoe, um, Kennedy was there as well. It, I don't know, it's a tough one with them, isn't it? I just, with when it, they keep changing their rotation as well, as if they're trying to find that kind of unit that works together like yep. they brought the boy Everett in I don't think he started yet Shelton started a few games Ben Watford started a few games Javin Hamlet came off the bench against them this time round and you're like like what are they looking for? like who what are yeah. still don't know who they identity are, they? of Newcastle like, yeah. you don't you don't know who they are and then you even look at that Leicester team and um, you know like, okay they're absolutely destroying um, Newcastle, but having watched that, I was like, there was no difference to how they played on um, Wednesday to how they played against Newcastle. I'm like, yeah. it's just if Newcastle didn't put pressure on them. Like, uh, Caledonia got 20 plus steals off them. Like, Leicester then against Newcastle only turned the ball over eight times. So they're never going to lose if you only turn the ball over eight times. Mm. Um, and but with Newcastle, you just, you just don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get. No. And it does feel I like that, think, it? Yeah, it just, you just, there's no kind of rhythm, routine, like, Cohen's their starting point guard, only played 20 minutes, I don't know if the, I don't know if there were reasons for that, but he only had one assist, uh, Kyle Johnston, who they've See, also brought like, in the former GB guys, got I liked, 24 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, decent, but when you've got nobody else contributing, even Hamlet off the bench was down at 14 points, you're like, like, what, what what are they trying to be? Yeah, I liked what what um, David Cohn was bringing to the Eagles early on in the season. He you know he was racking up eight nine assists and started to look, look pretty legit. Like you know like he could uh, he could start to um, start to fill. I mean it's tough shoes to fill, but you, if you're sharing the ball as much as Ramon sharing the ball, that's not yeah. a bad thing. You're not maybe not scoring. Um, but I guess, I guess teams have figured him out. It's, it's funny, but you know, uh, Nicholson always says it. He's not here, but he always says, you know, wait till they play them the second time. Like, wait till we match up to them the next time. See how they deal with certain players you haven't had to deal with before. And that seems to be the yeah. case with David. And, that's, and I think, yeah. And I wonder if that's what you we're beginning to see now. Teams beginning to play others, each other for a second time. And from like a gladiator's point of view, like we've now beaten less twice, we've beaten Sheffield twice, but we've lost to Cheshire twice. Yeah. So have you're beginning to see have teams, certain teams get certain teams, other teams' numbers and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, you you just wonder what Newcastle need to settle a kind of style, a, a rotation, and like it seems as if it's very much coaches trying to give all those guys the same amount of time, try them different places. Mockford, I don't know if he's been playing hurt, but. He's gone from playing high 
twenties to playing basically like ten minutes. And looking, he was looking pretty good as well, like early on. Yeah, and he's gone from being like you thought at one stage that Mockford was going to be the guy, Hmm. Uh, and now he's playing not very much, next to nothing, and can hardly get a chance to shoot. And he's a he's a shooter of the basketball, and you've given him one three attempt, and okay, he's only played ten minutes, but. There just doesn't seem like it's all kind of smooth sailing and going in the right direction. Everyone's not pulling the same way for them. We want to talk to ads. Well, full disclosure, he keeps disappearing. It's not. He, he's dis, he keeps disappearing, I know. Disappearing, popping back up again. Let's move to. Uh, I don't know if it's a sensitive subject or not. Two games on the bounce, Giants have come up in with losses. Not kind of what we expected. Um, there's been a bit of chat in various groups regarding things like they don't play a lot of defense, that kind of thing. Um, ads, my man. Do we? What's going on there? Do we need to be worried about the Giants? Nah, nah, not so. <laughs> Remember the missing the key player. Very William true. Blake is, is out at the moment and, and if anything this just proves what an important player to the team he actually is the guy does it everywhere he scores, he rebounds, he passes he, he, he just does everything and when you lose that it's a big it's a big thing to lose, I mean we're talking about a potential MVP candidate, you know what I mean mm. it's just, just not there and that's no disrespect to, to Ramon and, and Dirk and the other guys and, and Taj Green. It's just, that's just kind of how it is. They, they've started to settle into a really nice routine where Ramon was playing his his perfect position, mm. if that makes sense. He was being Ramon Fletcher. He was distributing. And then you've got Dirk Williams, who obviously is a big scorer. But then you, you've got William Lee that just sort of picks up everything else and does it very, very well and does it a lot. So he'll give you 25 points, 10 rebounds every night as well. So, yeah, and I mean, it's, it's one of them. It's just unfortunate that it's back-to-back defeats. But if anything else, it just sort of cements the deal even more as to the question of are Bristol legit? Well, that's the other thing. And they, and they are yeah. legit because they, they give Giants a, a, a drumming. You know, it wasn't just, a, it wasn't like the first time where it was a point game. They let, they let him have it. So. Do we, did he, but, William Lee's listed on the sheet. Did he, did he travel with the team? Is he in a situation where actually he might come back sooner than we think? Well, I, d- I don't know. There's been quite a bit of speculation as to when he's actually going to come back. And he, mm. like I mentioned last week, he said in a, interview with Jason Swain a few weeks ago that it was, you know, he was weeks away. Whether that um, whether that is still the case, I, I don't know. Um, I certainly didn't see him there. It was a bit of an odd situation for me because I was doing a commentary while that game was on but I had it on yeah. next to me. So, I'm commentating the magic and then I'm just looking <laughs> at the other screen going, hang on, what? What's the score? <laughs> and it's like, right, okay. Um, love that, but you know, you, you, hey, listen. You got, all, I, all I'm going to say is, from in terms of William Lee, so you've got a, a, a Giants team that was performing pretty well. They dropped a couple of games, obviously, and now they've hit a little bit of a of a slump. But when you look at what William Lee brings to the team, so he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's in top ten points per game. 18.4 points per game. He's leading the league in total rebounds, defensive rebounds, uh, top 10 for offensive rebounds. He leads the league in blocks. Um, there you go. He's in the top 10 for steals. <laughs> you know, it's just that what he, what he brings, top 10 for field goal percentage. I was seeing if he was in the three-point um, stat column anyway because he does like to put up a three but he doesn't seem to be in that area specifically but he I mean that those stats alone yeah, that's, I mean, a, that's a large place that's a large chasm to fill and I'm going to say chasm rather than 
<laughs> gap or anything else. It's a right. chasm when you look at the stats like that. It really is. The, the the only thing that makes you sort of raise a little bit of an eyebrow is going, right, okay, it is a big gap to fill, but with the quality that they've got with the rest of the roster, should they be losing to Bristol by 20 points? But then at the same time, at the moment, Bristol are just mm. so far on fire. It's hard to really tell what, what's going on there. I mean, I, I often wonder if this thing with Bristol at some point will, will come to an end, you know what I mean? But it just doesn't seem to be happening. Nope. You know, we're coming up to Christmas and they're still doing it. Um, and it doesn't like, look still like... Still got home games signs. as well. Yeah, and it doesn't look like they're showing signs of slowing down. So it isn't just one of those sort of wonder starts and then it sort of tails off a little bit. Mm. I mean, th- like I say, though, the, the Giants have got a deep enough squad this year to do it without William Lee if they need to do it. But what you said before about defence, have you seen who our head coach is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair point. He d- he you know, they're just, yeah. they're, they're just not a, a defensive orientated team. It's run and gun. It's fast break offence. It's three pointers. It's drives to the basket. You know, they've got great shooters all over the place. Um, so they, they win games on their offence. Mm. No, I think it's also, to be fair, we talked about the schedule for the Gladiators, but the recent schedule for the Giants is it's all been Bristol, London, Leicester. Like, guy, teams that we're thinking, Sheffield. Teams we... Have they played Sheffield? Whatever. Um, it's all teams we expect to be near the top of the table. So they might lose this round of match against them, but as we said, like until they play them again, who knows? Yeah. I mean, yeah. January's crazy for the Giants. I think there's five games for them in January because it just feels like they haven't had any game. They certainly haven't had a home game forever. Um, Which is a shame because they started to really fill the place up. Yeah, I mean, it's just as the momentum had really taken hold. It's Mm. like, wait a minute. And you you look at the the schedule and you go, God, we're not at home now till, you know, the back end of... When are we next at home? Away, away, away. We're not home until the, the 23rd of December. Yeah, 23rd of December, that's right. End of the month. Uh, wow. Next, next game we've got is London. That's a Sky game, isn't it? The Manchester. Well, yeah, it's Thursday, yeah. Thursday night. Um, you know, so it's London. Um, and then the Streaky Sharks. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a tough run. And then the week after that, the first home game back, who have we got? Oh, Leicester. <laughs> you know, admittedly, admittedly after that, we've then got Cheshire and Newcastle. But you know, that's that's a, a you know a lot of games in a in a short space of time. That with some pretty tricky ones and a tough so run. I, yeah, I, I think we're going to see this um, classic BBL thing of whoa, who's in the middle of the league, who's top of the league, who's bottom. You know, where it sort of mm. just fluctuates and got teams start going up and down, left, right, and centre. But yeah, in all seriousness, the, yeah. the two at the top, you just can't really see them shifting at the moment. The only positive it's interesting about you look at this. Giants playing all those games is that towards the back end of the season, they they maybe get an, a, not an easier run, but you know you haven't got the big guys left to play. Yeah. You've, got, you've got some winnable games. You've not still the, you got know. to win, but you've then got to win those of course, games, though. Yeah, you'd rather have them in the bank. And this definitely. is where Bristol, Brist, exactly. And when you look at Bristol's next schedule as well, like they've got their next two league games are at home again, and then they basically are away from home for the next five games. So yeah. you wonder, and those away games are London, Manchester. Uh, this may be a lot old list then if you said that list, that Manchester game might have moved, but London, Surrey, Plymouth, Surrey again. Okay, the Surrey ones they probably will get, but Plymouth away, London away, yeah. tough ga- tough games. Everyone's mm-hmm. struggling away from home this year, so I think a lot of it, until we get to the middle of March, April time, and t- when the schedule's even out, it's yeah. uh, there'll be teams that go on big winning runs, there'll be teams that go on losing runs, all because they're away from home. I mean, it's, the, it's a big game for Giants on Thursday, actually. Mm. You know, playing London at the Copper Box, it's a, it's a really big game for them, that. Obviously, it's Vince and Dirk going back to the Copper Box. 
Um, yes. And they gave him a good run last time, if you remember. You know, well, Manchester. William Lee went down in that. Had he not have done yeah. that, could have been a different outcome. Yeah, uh, I mean, they looked. I was literally, if you remember, had my finger hovering on the button to be <laughs> yeah. like, "There you go." Um, and then they, just couldn't, they just couldn't close it out. It's slightly worrying that William Lee isn't going to be there this time. Um, mm. But you know, this is where they've got to be looking at the guys. I mean, you pulled him out of the pile, perhaps. Uh, Roberson being the silent oh. assassin, you know, Big fan. He's, he's, he's a great player. Mm. Uh, you know, you've got to be looking down your bench at guys like Nathan Robinson that are, that are putting shifts in and, and and hoping that they can come up big and, and pick up some of the numbers where they're missing from, from William Lee. Yeah. The, the problem is, points is one thing. It's the other end of the court, rebounds. Yeah, rebounds and defence. But where, they've, where they've, got to, they've got to tighten things up a bit because mm. without him... I'd say there's a big hole in the defense, not so much in the offense. Well, we'll, we'll certainly keep a, a keen eye on the uh, on the Giants and see what that uh, if that turns out. If William Lee comes back, which obviously would be uh, good, I, I don't. They're not. I mean, he is coming back, isn't he? It's not a situation where they're actually going to look oh, no, to bring someone in. No, I mean he's he's coming back. It okay. was. Um, you know, I just think that the, the, the diagnosis didn't come back as they thought it was no. going to be. It was okay. one of those injuries that's, you know, a month rather than, you know, a few weeks, you know. it's uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's still around. He's still, uh, you know, at the game. He's still going to practice, but I don't think he's practicing full on as such. But, no, no I don't think it's uh, a case that they're going to have to want to bring someone in. The final f- the cup fixture, I don't think we've missed any other ones out, is just uh, London Lions in the copper box, um, beating the Cheshire Phoenix by just nine points in the end. Um, bit of a rally by the Phoenix. 18-11, they took the fourth quarter. I think, obviously, some of the damage were done in the third, and it was a, it was a bit of a mountain to climb. Um, anything you guys want to say on that one? No, not a real shock. I think we all picked the Lions. They yeah, seem I mean, to go quite deep into the bench. Yeah, it's fairly evenly shared in terms of points and index, particularly if you look down their index of the guys oh, who played the major minutes. They're all in sort of double figures with the exception of Kufos. Is that also David Ulf's first game back? Oh, it may well have been, actually. Yeah, could be, yeah it could be. Uh, he yeah, eight twenty one bench for Cheshire. Right, yeah. um, well, I mean, but it's like... I think it's also... Wanted. Hang on. One at a time. Who's going? Grant, go on. You go, Ads. No, no, you go, Ads. Go on, Ads. Yeah. All, all I was going to say <laughs> is whenever I look at the stats for London, I always look down the whole thing to see if they've used everybody. And then I look at the indexes to see where they're at. Because if you notice, they're all, you know, a lot of them are in double figures index, but the highest yeah. one's are only 14. You, mm-hmm. you know, so they're all between like 10 and 12 and, and stuff like that. So. <clears throat> You know, I, I don't know how. I suppose the more minutes that are distributed, the more the index figures are are affected by it. So yes, you, you know, they're they're coming at it with the they're using every resource that they've got available to them. Mm. And there's nobody, you know, it's a couple of times this where no one's actually stood out as having a spectacular game. Because if you look down the stats for that game, no one lit it up particularly. No, it's all it's all shared. It's all shared across the board. Uh, Grant, my I think, uh, on I think on comms, Josh um, gave MVP to Luke Nelson, for example. Yeah. Um, with 12 points in 18 minutes, I think this is one of the games, I think, that you could tell lines were looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. Magum off the bench, 13 minutes. Uh, Mo Solade played probably his most and good number of weeks. There was no... Decker, no Ovi Solko, I think struggling a wee bit. Ruban only played 14 minutes. It was very, I think this is one of the ones where coach rotated a lot. And I think Cheshire also played pretty well outside of the first kind of quarter when they kind of struggled. And that's when they think the game was kind of done early. London just shut it down after that. Quite impressed with Ruban. I mean, like you said, with, um, with Luke Nelson playing. 
18 minutes, 12 points. Likewise, Ruban only played 14 minutes. He got 12 points also. Um, obviously, maybe not as many in the rebounds or assist department, but he looked very good. But yeah, I agree. They, they, they're certainly, they've got one eye on the European competition that obviously is, is taking precedence and they don't need I to run with guys out. As well, you can tell that. Yeah, you can tell that when they're, they feel like the game's won and more comfortable. There's a lot more rotation. Yeah. The game against Giants, game against Gladiators, game against the, even the Bristol game that they lost. When they've been in bigger games or in closer games, their big players have played more minutes. It's not as if they've just continued that rotation. It's been no. as if Coach Schmidt goes, you know what, this is a tough game, my big boy, I'm going to get the big guys back on and playing. Absolutely. Anything else to say about the fixtures we've... Uh... I think we've covered pretty much all of it, haven't we? I'd say so. Let's uh, let's come up with a BTR five, Lynn. Let's get that done. Let's uh, call up. I'll call up the list, so to speak. Last week, Dusha Fletcher, VJ King, Zach Jackson, and Rashad Hassan. This week, I don't know if Nicholson sent. I know he sent through his predictions. I don't know if he sent through his. Uh, no, nah, there's no fives. I guess Patriots I mean, we didn't play. Them so last he's got week. no one to pick off. He's got yeah, no one to pick, has he? he's got. We slide them <laughs> and then pick two of the guys. So. Uh, Ads and I as uh, secondary uh, Patriot fans have no one just to go to. <laughs> um, we'll probably still find a way of including Dusha or someone in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I mean, fire away, fellas, but I, I'm more than willing, or I would actually quite like to put um, Bailey in there for, for the fixture against the Riders because I thought he was very, very good. So with you guys... Yeah. Agreeing with Definitely that, I'll, uh, I'll with stick that him one. on the list. Absolutely. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, I've only got three. It's all right, we'll make up the other two. Give us give us one of them. Mark Loving. Mark, well, for which, for the, uh, oh, they played two games, didn't they? Yeah, for that the for game. the cup. The one where he, yeah, he went, yeah, he went off. He game. did, didn't he? That's right, you're absolutely right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the Newcastle game, he, he, he was insane. He How happy was that? Problems. And days of 39. That's yeah. not bad at all, is it? That's not to be yeah. sniffed at. Yeah, so Mark Loving was one of mine, obviously. Go on, Grant, give us another one. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to go Sloan or Burns. Uh, the defensive effort from both of them across both games um, was just superb. Um, I'm going to put forward, I think you've got to have Sloan in there. He's what he brought on Wednesday from points and uh -huh. wherever else. So um, I'm, I think David Sloan's going to feature most weeks for me. He didn't shoot the ball as well from three, but he was still just the leader of the pack. Four steals, three assists, two, two rebounds. 20 points behind Bailey with 23 so I think I'll take my quota of two gladiators from those two. <laughs> Can I throw uh, Malcolm Del Pesh into yeah, the Del, uh, Del conversation? Pesh on that for, for the Giants game. Yeah he, he yeah. looked he looked very good in that he looked yeah. uh, he looked like he's he may be edging the, uh, the war of the brothers yeah Malcolm or Marcus, I can never decide. You think it's one and then the other one has a really good game, but Malcolm seems to be setting himself apart slightly. Um, 18 points, 12 rebounds, 27 index. Two for two from the free throw line as well, even though they've both got that kind of weird free throw action. He, he, he knocked them down, but yeah, I thought he had a great uh, a great game. We'll put How many games have we got? That's four. Can, that's, that's I, the last again, he's, he's one of my... Oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, yeah. That's who Bailey came from. Yeah, well, Jeremiah Bailey was my, well, my third. Good. We're all in sync. We need one more. Yeah. Well, I want to throw in there... 
Go on. I want to put in Watson Gale from Flyers. For the... To, uh, against the Giants. Amaze me with his talents and how he plays. 21, 21 points off 21 the bench. 21 points against the Giants off the bench. Five rebounds for the guard. I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan of him. He's a great player. There was maybe better performances from other Flyers. VJ King's always a standout, but well, I think we give the rookie the plaudits. No real standout from um, from the Lions per se, as we've already said. It was kind of a team performance on that one. Is that not where a few other? Like obviously, we're not doing it based purely on stats. Whoever else would play, but when no. you have other kind of top fives doing it based on stats, that. I know we're different, but I'm just saying this is you're not going to get many lines featuring in Team of the Week from the league if <laughs> they're basing off index, are you? No. Absolutely. Could this be a season where the where, could this be a season where your league MVP or say one of the Lions players gets MVP uh, doesn't actually feature that highly in Team of the Week order of play? Yeah, but that's the thing. We have had Lions in the team in, in our five a few times, so haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, yeah. Well, it's that time, then, chaps, for us to uh, to hit up. Let's, let's, I'll read out the five quickly first. So we've gone with Jeremiah Bailey, Mark Loving, uh, David Sloan, Malcolm Del Pesh, and Watson Gale as our five for the weekend. That uh, and from Wednesday, obviously previous that have impressed us. Now we move to the important work of the predictions. So, fellas, let's turn our attention to the predictions. Um, if we look at last week's, so Caledonia got the win, which Grant predicted none of us, none of the rest of us did. Lions then obviously take the win against Cheshire, which we all predicted. Flyers win over Giants, which is another one for Grant. Uh, everyone is here. Ads got that one. Riders then win um, their cup game, which we all predicted, and then Gladiators take the very last game of the weekend, which we all predicted. But it does mean, Mr. Grant Young, you swept the board. Come on, full house. Full, full house. house. Bingo. Oh. And no, no predictions in retrospect either. He adds. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> so I ended up with four at the weekend. Adds three. Nicholson got four as well over the weekend. So um, just bringing one back one week at a time. Uh, just working out the totals now. That brings adds up to twenty. Grant to twenty-two. Nicholson to twenty-four, and I'm on twenty-five. So, uh, there's not a lot in it, fellas. It's looking it's good. Spicing up, eh? It is, not off. So that, not off, pot pickers. Uh, oh God, there's probably no one old enough to remember that, is there? No. Do you remember no, Smashy and Smashy Nicey? And nicey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the advert for uh, uh, Fabs? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He sat, he sat on the roof of the, uh, of the ice cream van. <laughs> Not on sure, the right. inside lane, it's red ice. In the middle lane, it's white ice. And on the outside, it's quite literally hundreds of thousands. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Enough of that. Fixtures time. So first, second, and third. And fourth of December. <laughs> We're going to the fourth. What's the thing on? I've got to check my calendar now. So have we got... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've got one Maybe tomorrow Thursday night. night. Uh, sorry. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. Good Lord. How are you, how are you liking? I mean, I've, I think we should have more midweek fixtures. What do you guys think? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Stall in front of it works. Teams make money from it. Yeah. So There's no point Thursday. having midweek games if arenas are empty. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How exciting. Right, sorry, yes. I guess uh, 
the first one we'll talk about is for European. Oh, it's, it's a it's a it's a harsh back to back, isn't it, for the Lions, who of course will be playing in Europe. And have they played tonight? No, I don't think so. Tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow night. Because we're recording this Tuesday night, not Wednesday night. Do they play Wednesday night? Because if they do, then they obviously they play Thursday. <laughs> They take on the uh, the Giants. That's a that's a harsh turnaround, isn't it? Even for a team with that squad. Do you want me to make that prediction? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that is the first prediction uh, to make. So, first of December, Thursday night, London Lions take on the Manchester Giants. I've opened up too many windows there. Ads, my man. Who are you picking on this one? Let's go, Giants. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Giants. Let's go. Grant, my man. I'm, even though London are going... I think they're, they're at home tomorrow night. I was it just is. checking to see. That was me making my prediction based on where they were. Since they're at home, I'm going to see London. Yeah, it's tough to call. Because um, it is a lot playing obviously it takes a lot out of that squad in terms of in terms of European fixtures but the Giants obviously without William Lee that that could sway on it I'll go Paul says London I'll go Lions as well Nicholson's gone Lions he's got London so adds adds you could pick one up that week this weekend or the Thursday I should say Friday night's game is that oh yeah? Because that was a, there was a funny tweet regarding the Eagles being on Sky again. <laughs> did you see it? No, I did. I think I don't know if it was a Sky tweet or it was the BBL tweeting about fixtures this this month and it's Eagles again. And the comment was, "Why are the Eagles on again? They're the worst team to watch." <laughs> <laughs> but this could be a decent game. Guys, don't watch Sheffield. New guys. <laughs> Newcastle Eagles at home, Cheshire Phoenix, the visitors. Could could be an interesting fixture, this one. Both teams not in the best form, shall we say. Uh, Ads one, man. Let's start with you. Where are you going with this one? Newcastle versus who? <laughs> Cheshire. Cheshire. Next for you. Grant, my man. Um, well, looking at Nicholson, he's gone Cheshire. Ads has gone Cheshire. I'm thinking I might actually go with Newcastle. Yeah. Just the wee zag. We're going Eagles. I will go Knicks as well. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Tough. Tough room. Um, that's the only game on Friday. Saturday, we've got two fixtures. Surrey Scorchers at home. Leicester Riders, the visitors. I'll go first. Riders. What's Nicholson going for? He's not mentioned. He's missed this game out. Has he? Yeah. He's not. Oh. He's made his next pick is Flyers, so he's missed a game. Oh, dear. Should we let him know? Or should he, we just... He'll, uh, need to, he'll need to find out when he listens to the podcast. He'll listen to the show and he'll, he'll message me frantically <laughs> with his prediction <laughs> to get it in before tip-off. Anyway. That's all he does. Grant, where are you going with it? <laughs> um... Scorchers. Who's winning it? Uh, Leicester. A riders win for you. Ads, my man. Leicester. I think that's where the safe money is, but you never know. Leicester. Don't know. It was a strange weekend for them, wasn't it? Although they did pick up a fairly dominant win against the Sharks, and it's the Sharks in action in the second game on Saturday. Bristol Flyers at home again. They might not going to have any home fixtures left second half of the season. They'll be taking on the... Imagine they start selling second half of the season season tickets for one home game. <laughs> imagine, imagine you're a season ticket holder. Oh, I'll buy a, oh, they're doing really well. I'll buy a season ticket for the second half of the season. One game in April. <laughs> The Bristol Flyers at home, Sheffield Sharks, the visitors. Uh, Grant, my man, kick us off. Flyers. We are the team with the form. You said Nicholson went Flyers as well. Mm -hmm. I'll go 
Flyers. Ads, my man, gonna zag? Flyers. No, no zag from ads. Not for, certainly not for Sheffield. Certainly not for the old enemy. No. Sunday's fixtures then. Uh, oh, here's a humdinger of a game. Up in Scotland, Caledonia Gladiators at home. Uh, Plymouth City Patriots making the journey. I was what hoping we you guys were going to come up for this one. We should have planned that a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm better. going to obviously choose the gladiators. Well, I'm guessing Nick. Uh, and you Nicholson. can guess who Mr. Nicholson also That's... chose gladiators. No, I mean, Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you're going with this. Pat's well, you know, a lot of love for both teams, but I think that the inform glads mm. might just stick this one, to be honest. I think you might be right, but I'm still going to go Pats, hoping that Troy Simons is back for that one. I know he's... They've is that an exclusive? Hoyed with his fitness and uh, and the hope that he'll come back. No, is that no an exclusive, exclusive there, no, I, don't, I don't know. I just know <laughs> that when they when they said it originally, obviously it was only going to be a couple of weeks and it's gone on and on, so we'll see. Mm. Last game then... Uh, of the weekend. Cheshire Phoenix at home. Surrey Scorchers, the visitors. Could be a chance for the Scorchers to exact some revenge from the uh, the two times they've played them. So I'm going to pick Scorchers on that one. Ads, my man. Yeah, why not? Let's give the Scorchers a chance. Bless them. Come on, Surrey. Grant? Um, I'm going to go, go next and so is Paul. He's gone next as well. He's gone Nick's as well. Well, I think that does it for the weekend. Um, obviously, then after that, we're looking at the seventh, which is Patriots midweek, which I've had to change a shift for, which I've managed to do. So did you get it changed? Did you get I it? Did. I did. I managed to get one that finishes at half four. I was finishing at 20 past seven. It was going to be a bit of a rush. <laughs> Shout out to me, mate, at work. The voice... Uh, and a little shift for the us. voice of Plymouth Patriots will be there. That's all that everyone cares about. What? Who's that? Yeah. Oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> also, an exclusive. I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There are conversations over uh, over the Christmas period. Twenty eighth is the fixture: Plymouth City Patriots against the Bristol Flyers, um, which is also a Wednesday night at uh, pavilions the ant row who is from plymouth family in plymouth coming back to plymouth for christmas may well be on comms with us there's been the, nice. there's been a conversation nicholson probably won't like me bringing that up might be a nice surprise but who knows he may he may come on he may not hopefully he can do it because that'll be great fun um but there you go. I think that's it for us, fellas. It's been a, a fairly quiet one. We've had a, we put a few videos up on YouTube just to kind of see what the response would be. Pretty good, actually. I've quite in, quite enjoyed it. Live well on Twitter, aren't it? Yeah, bit of bit of a um. So the the they went up on our YouTube channel, which is below the rim, obviously on YouTube, and um, that's had a they've had a few hits. People like the intro, which is good because that was fun. Just me. Yeah. Messing about with uh, video effects on various plays, but yeah, we'll try and add some more um, as things go on. So keep an eye out on uh, on the YouTube channel for that. And mainly segments from this show. Although I'm toying with the idea if we if we can get ourselves organised and together that we record the show and then we'll record a couple of extra little tidbits for YouTube um, and get them out there. To, to spark some discussions and see how that goes. So keep an eye on that. But Ads, my man, thanks for being on. Anything to, anything to plug, anything to say? No, it's been, it's been a pretty mad weekend, really, because there's, there's been a lot going on, because there's GB women's game. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's been two women's games. Um, I've been really busy with Academy Basketball and uh, and the Magic this weekend, so it's a bit like, well, that's hard to catch up a lot with the, with the BBL. Over, uh, not always easy, is it? Oh, it's just you know, you blink and another weekend's gone. And I'm looking at my wall planner, which is a sticker system for each team that I have involvement with. 
Oh, cool. I'm looking, at, <laughs> and I'm looking at this Saturday's and going, wow, there is one, two, three, four, five stickers on the weekend. Blimey. Actually, mate, what a hero. Stickers. What a hero. It's white and you can't see it very well. <laughs> That's a lot of commentary. That is a lot of commentary. Good luck with that. <laughs> what a guy. Love that, ads. Well, it's, um, we do the um, the Manchester Revolution, the uh, the Premier League wheelchair team. Oh, no way. They're playing out of Bellevue now. And um, it's like it's a bit of a, an all-star team of like GB players, and they're just decimating everything in their path at the moment. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's a lot of fun. And um, Mystics are at home. Think magic might have a go. I just, I just turn up where I'm supposed to be at roughly around the time I'm supposed to be there. Well, good effort, sir, and, and a true Love ambassador for the, for the British game. Wish I could do. I wish I could do just more. We, just what we talked about last week, though, isn't it? Like Ads has already got all that in his diary for next week. A wall calendar saying where yeah. he's going to be when. What a guy! Love that Ads. <laughs> well, oh, he's all bashful now. <laughs> no, I mean it's um, it, it, yeah, I, I, it's a weird one because obviously um, the Giants are, are, are my team and always have been, but mm. the amount of love I have for the Manchester Magic is unbelievable, and I kind of wish that they were in the BBL in a lot of ways, so we could talk oh, about how amazing they are. But you know, well, you say all this sat there in like a kappa slapper with your uh, Manchester Magic jersey on there. Of course, always got to be representing. Good man, Mister Young, sir. Anything to plug before you before we go? Obviously, the podcast is out there. Obviously, the podcast out there for Jordan. Hopefully, got a few other recordings planned for this week. Hopefully, send out uh, Prince Onwes, who's kind of taking the week by storm as well. Yes. Um, I've started using Instagram with the Gladcast podcast. So if you're on Instagram, give us a follow, Gladcast B underscore B ball. Nice. And yeah, if you get a chance, it'd be good. Oh, to have a, right listen now. to Glad- a bit. Gladcast. What? <laughs> Ads, you're a hero today. <clears throat> My guy. Um, <laughs> and yeah, if you've got a 20 minutes spare or whatever, give the interview with Jordan Burns I listen to, it'd be even better. Perhaps yourself. Well, in, con- the in contrast to that, we are. Don't be offended with our Instagram. Um, I went on it yesterday, and we've got like twenty six requests to follow. And I just, uh, yeah, really I need clicked, to put that game on there because I it's clicked on most awesome. of it. I'm not I just can... saying this, Pabs, but I've had to accept the fact that Instagram is a huge <laughs> platform, especially for doing what we do. I can't do it. So that doesn't make any sense to me at all. I'll give you the. I'll, I'll happily give you the sign in because I. I've got no idea. <laughs> I tried to do hey, some bits. I'm a, I, that's one thing. I was like, Twitter is very easy. It's good. It's good fun. You can just type away, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Instagram takes a bit of time. Yeah, I don't have time. To set it up, get it all done, images, content. Hey, shout out to all the kind of Instagram content people out there. Is, time is, their time is very, very much taken up with making things really good. So well done to them. Well, the thing with Instagram is, is I just get distracted because it's obviously ninety <laughs> percent of the feed is hoops. But I also follow lots of things like uh, this guy here, who, if you look at my phone, has giant tarantulas. And stuff oh like Jesus! <laughs> what on yeah. earth? Yeah, I like following things about spiders and crocodiles and stuff. So I'll be like flinging through the thing, going, "Oh, that's a nice dunk! Oh, look at the size of that alligator!" <laughs> And then before I know it, I'm, I'm trawling through a sea of crocodile videos. Oh, dear. But, Good. Uh, it's so easy to do, isn't it? You just get distracted. It's all on you, man. Good. Well played. I just don't get it. I, do... <laughs> well, I can't cope with that. Anyway, fellas, thank you very much for joining me. Everybody at home, thank you for listening. Until next time, take it easy. We'll speak to you soon. Bye.